Hi everyone, this is Abrar. Welcome to Abrar Nale channel. Today we're going to talk about visual management part two. So I this is the follow-up video for the book called book review called Storytelling with Data by Welly. So let's talk about what we saw in uh, session one. I'm going to skip all of this one. These are all the slides we saw in session one. And the summary of uh, part one was practical tips of uh, visual management. Practical tips mean Arthur tries to tell that there are few, uh, six practical tips. One is any data when we are projecting it, it has to be neat. We should not be too crowded and uh, only the item which need to be focused, only that need to be bold and colored. So rest all should not be colored, should not be bold. And then storytelling has a significant impact uh, on any data. When you take a data, when you take uh, in a storytelling, storytelling is something which goes in long term memory and it gets well registered. And then it talks about the practice. Practice, we always say that practice is a mother of success. And this author also tells the same, same thing. And then we talked about the ignorance. What are the things which we tend to ignore when it comes to presentation, storytelling with data. So uh, how we should uh, you know, have the data and how the data should be sorted out, how the data should be gridded and so on. We will talk more about in the following uh, video also as well. So storyboarding, anything which has any peculiar issues you have, any uh, business challenges we have, then story, I mean, uh, storyboarding is very important. We can ask uh, different peoples to come forward and write what they felt and all that. Choosing the effective visuals, uh, we talked about different charts, charts like bar chart, heat, heat map chart, scatter chart, waterfall chart and all that. So this is the summary of uh, part one. And let's see what is part two unfolded with, yeah? So the part two is all about, you see with your brain. This is very nice uh, concept, we're gonna talk about it. And uh, this is something called clutter, clutter meaning like messy, uh, not organized well. And we're talking about the uh, clutter and cognitive load. When you have too much information within the chat, how difficult uh, is for the reader or the receiver to understand and get the uh, extract from it. So then we talked about, uh, we will we'll be talking about data ink and signal to ratio. So what you need to kind down, how we should kind down and uh, signal to uh, noise ratio also we'll talk about. And then memory, this also uh, talks about the psychological point of view. Uh, there is something called short-term memory, long-term memory, and iconic memory, and so on. And pre-attentive example, if you want only certain words, or certain elements, or certain data to be uh, you know, pitched, should be you know, focused, then how you can highlight those things, uh, both in the chart format and both in the text format. We're gonna talk about it. And we also have few examples of uh, uh, graphs and charts also as well. The best of uh, in the level one, I mean in the session one, I really like this chart. So maybe this this is the best chart I have ever come across. Uh, it says like we have, we are talking about uh, seven parameter, but only one parameter, uh, We we if you wanted to focus uh, and bring an attention to management, how we can focus it, for example, this is something uh, it's coming down 49 percentage career de development to 33 so all other positive sign we don't need to give more focus and within a minute how we can uh, you know uh, give the information which is critical and uh, how we can take the message and how the reader or the management or the people who is viewing it can take the message that's the the entire summary of what we saw in say, uh, session one and we'll talk about session two now. So focus on your audience attention. So it first it says that actually what first in anything which you depicted, let's say you, you have an idea and we have a chart, anything which you see, your eye sees it and your brain tries to calculate what, what it is and all that. So let's let's look at the simplified picture of how people see depicted in 4.1. This is the picture of 4.1. The process goes something like this: the light. Uh, reflex of a stimulus and this gets captured by your eyes you don't fully see with your eyes there is something processing even without seeing full thing 
our mind is very attentive and we start calculating uh, to it they call it as a visual perception yeah so clutter clutter is this uh, you know this entire book is against with the clutter and it says that uh, one complete uh, cul culprit that can contribute to excessive or extraneous cognitive load is something i refer to simply as clutter clutter means like a messy too much information too crowded and so on these visual element can take up space but do not increase understanding so and it also gives like how we can avoid the clutter and uh, and so on so this is the clutter is your enemy i again uh, it is uh, an addition reference on the clutter clutter is your enemy and it uh, talks about uh, you know the picture a blank page or a blank screen every single element you add uh, to that page takes a uh, page or a screen takes up the cognitive load for example you have a picture and you try to write uh, something called six sigma even six sigma uh, so what is gonna come next right so you keep going that means your cognitive uh, mind is uh, trying to capture how much what is been written what is been displayed what is been uh, you know shown and all that so exam this is a nice way of uh, telling it example of blank page when you have and uh, your mind is uh, you know try to have the information as much as possible and try to process it and all that so eliminating clutter is the focus of this chapter so whatever the it should not be too it should be easy read it should be easy uh, for the audience to follow for the people who read the charts or uh, interpret the chart it should be easy to follow it should be self explanatory and then uh, it talks about Uh, these are all the word being used clutter is messy or mess disorder or overcrowded cognitive you you all know cognitive cognitive meaning like rational thinking uh, reasoning and uh, this something called discerning then sharp or sensitive and decipher read uh, decode interpret so in other word it, it says the cognitive load you have felt that burden of cognitive load before perhaps you were sitting in a conference room as a person Uh, leading the meeting was uh, flipping through their projects slides and all that they passed on one that looked overwhelming and busy and complicated so it what it says is actually like when we when we are loading too much of information in the ppt too much in information in the slide uh, our brain uh, you know will not be able to remember everything but uh, so what we can do is we can just show in a, in such a way that actually which is sharp that's that's the word it has been used here Uh, discerning which is sharp and very very sensitive and everyone can be a uh, decipher meaning like it, everyone can decode and read and interpret the information what is given so and then the data ink or uh, signal to ratio uh, it also gives a small reference to it uh, it says that actually the key focusing on reducing the cognitive load meaning like when you have one slide uh, we need to have as less information as we want uh but within the less information we can make sure that we can be highlighted it can be uh something you know uh, added the cloud uh, i mean uh, and then it it should be highlighted properly so that the reader can read and understand it so basically the, the summary of this one graph shall indicate the only actionable and must not be cluttered or for too much uh, decipher it should not be too difficult to understand also it should be easy at the same time it should be less crowded with the charts and wording uh, what will happen is uh, detract will happen diminish or reduce we may tend to uh, you know uh, lose the concentration and so on so brief about the memory how our memory works and uh, this is ba basically talks about a brief lesson on memory within the brain there are three type of memory so one is called iconic memory one is called short term memory one is called long term memory so let's talk about what is mean by iconic memory iconic memory is super fast why it is a super fast it happens without your consciously realizing it or when we looked at the world around us why because our mind is already pre cognitive and it says that what we going to come uh, what we are going to uh, say and all that so this is iconic memory so that means information uh, stays in your iconic memory for a fraction for a fraction of second before it gets forwarded on on to shorter short term memory the important thing about this iconic memory is that 
it is turned to set the pre-attentive attributes. We'll talk about more specifically what is mean by pre-attentive attributes. Uh, print attentive attributes are critical tools uh, in your visual designs tool belt. That means in pre-attentive attributes, we will talk about it. That is the key element uh, and uh, which is we must need to have and learn it. We'll come back to in those in a minute. In a, in a meantime, let's continue to decision on memory. So short term memory and long term memory. So we understand that, okay, anything iconic is super fast and it tries to have that information and, and, and then it goes to short, short term memory. Short term memory has a limitation specifically uh, specifically people can keep about four chunks on visual uh, information in short term memory at the given time so every person is different some people will be able to grasp everything and some people will have a limitation and all that so in that it says that we don't want to make our audience audience work uh, work to get the information everything and because in doing so uh, we ran the risk of losing their attention with that we lose the ability to communicate so when you have too much information you wanted to stress everything and uh, anything and everything what will happen is it can get flipped from the short term memory also as well and uh, the attention or the the core importance might get lost so the last one is the long term memory there are aspect of long term memory that we want to make use of it when it comes to having a, a, a message stick with our audience that's what in the NLP talks more about it when you give an, an action, when you write it on the board or when you explain with the body language, everything, it stays uh, with too much things. It stays like uh, your action will get recorded, uh, you know, and, and so on. So, of course, a particular importance of a conversation is that the images that help uh, can help us and more quickly recall their uh, stored in the long term uh, verbal memory. So, this is... Uh, this is what it talks about. So iconic memory, short term memory and long term memory. So this is one example. This is what we talked about iconic uh, memory. We talked about uh, pre attentive attributes, right? So in this one, it says, let's take an example like this. You are giving it. You have too many number, but you want only one element. You want uh, the audience to focus. Then let's say you are just adding up like three, three and that particular word the particular number you're highlighting as bold like three three and all that that anybody can say that okay there are uh, six threes are available this is remarkable and profoundly powerful it means that if we use pre-attentive attribute strategically they can help us enable our audience to see what we want them to see before they even know they are seeing it so this is the one example of pre-attentive with the number Let's talk about the, with the attributes. Let's say you want, uh, this is the same passage has been given no uh, pre-attentive attributes. Like, no, you will not able to, you will not audience to focus, you, you are forcing audience to read everything. Only then they will take the message. Or you want the key light, like these products are clearly the best uh, in their class. Or only this turn, or you can bold it, or you can make it italic, you can make it little bigger size without me having to ask or you can make it like uh, outline or you can underline it or you can use a separate uh, partially so in all of these things we can use it uh, to even in the text also we can use pre attentive attributes so another example of pre attentive attributes let's say you have a, you, you want to write a bullets you can write like great products and then followed by sub bulletin replacement parts are shipped when needed sub bulletin problem solved prom promptly sub bullet general uh, customer service exceed the expectation bullet so like this uh, we can very well use it so this is one last one uh, let's let's say you wanted to have a predict uh, this is your last year uh, prediction and now currently as and today you are here that means what Arthur tells that actually we can just unbold the last year otherwise what will happen what can happen is our mind tries to go and uh, pick it up uh, the last one information we'll try to focus on this one we might tend to miss that what is the progress we have made till then so it is also very important and even if you can also add the small uh, text also as well like you know you can add like you know between six two thousand six to two thousand nine seven to eight percent improvement and so on and how what is this is the actual one and what is the forecast also we can add it in one chart uh, it, it looks very very nice 
so thank you so much and i have one more uh, uh, you know in the same topic visual management visual management i'm going to cover the one more uh, topic which is left out and uh, with the case studies and all that uh, in the following video i will be making it so till then thank you so much for viewing it supporting it and uh, and if you need anything uh, please do like uh, i mean uh, do come back with me and please do like share and subscribe my channel you have a nice day ahead have a nice day.